like to do it. Be honest now, do you play with the dog? Do you do it in the car or in the top hat? What properties are you itching to buy? Monopoly is the ultimate capitalist amusement. And this toy tribute to the vicious real estate market has complicated roots. Monopoly became a real rags to riches story when it turned a poor inventor into a wealthy man. But true to the spirit of the game, that lucky inventor may have stolen the idea from the true creator. Life in America wasn't easy in 1933. The country was in the depths of the Great Depression. An unemployed heating engineer named Charles Darrow was tired of being poor. So he slapped together a few household items and created something that would become a household name. The board itself is just made out of oil cloth, which is very common in most households. The little hotels and houses are just bits of molding that he bought at a lumber yard, chopped up. And the graphics can be more basic, your fountain pen and, and a ruler. And the idea for the game? Well, the idea had been around for quite a while. In 1904, a lady named Elizabeth Maggie patented the Landlord's Game. This game had a square board, 40 spaces named for streets and railroads. And instead of go, the starting square was called Mother Earth. Actually, Lizzie was a pretty radical gal. She was a tax reformer, and she wanted her game to teach folks all about the evil done by ruthless landlords. But it didn't quite work out that way. It seems that people played the game because they liked driving all their friends into financial ruin. So next, Maggie tried a little capitalism of her own. She updated her game and in 1924 offered it to Parker Brothers. They declined to buy it. But the game lived on. People even made their own game boards like this one, which was made around 1920. Often, players change the place names to match local streets, towns, and railroads. Around 1932, a Pennsylvanian named Charles Todd put together this homemade version of the game. Todd used the street names from the nearby resort town of Atlantic City. And he liked to have a few friends over to play a round or two, like his pal, Charles Darrow. Remember Mr. Darrow? Advance directly to go. Darrow thought this game was a winner, and he wanted a monopoly on Monopoly. He started to make his own copies. But Darrow made his first games round. I think the most reasonable conjecture is that the table in which they played in the Darrow household wasn't a square card table, but a round kitchen table. <laughs> And so the cloth was cut to fit. It was customized. Darrow's one-man assembly line could make maybe one or two games a day. He wasn't going to get rich this way. So just like Lizzie Maggie, Darrow patented his game and took it to Parker Brothers in 1933. They still didn't want to roll the dice. And in their infinite wisdom, they came up with something like 52 major flaws in the game. Flaws like, hey, it takes too long. The rules are too complicated. There's no clear-cut ending. So Darrow went home and had the game printed privately. And it sold just fine. Parker Brothers was impressed with the sales record. And that's when Parker Brothers went back to him and uh, said, now we're interested in your game and forget about the 52 flaws. <laughs> and uh, they took over the publishing of the game, giving him a royalty, of course. So, did Charles Darrow go to jail, directly to jail, for borrowing Lizzie Maggie's game? No. To avoid legal hassles, Parker Brothers went back to Maggie and bought her game, too. But the game they put on the shelves was Darrow's. At a time when the nation's real economy was not very good, Monopoly was a wonderful way of fantasizing about making it rich. It was Parker Brothers who added the tokens, household items like the thimble, the shoe, and iron. Then came the top hat and racing car, signs of the good life that a real estate baron could expect to enjoy. But even when mass-produced, the game remained almost identical to Darrow's. Officer Mallory, the policeman, Jake the jailbird in jail over there, they were his, his artwork, and, and we've kept those. I mean, they're, you know, they're, that's tradition. 
Monopoly outlived dozens of other games Parker Brothers thought were sure winners. It has been played by generations of American families, including real millionaires, like the Forbes publishing family. The game can go on forever, and, and you can get wonderfully mad at each other. Earthquakes were usually how some of our early games ended. Monopoly made Darrow a millionaire, allowing him to retire at the age of 46. As for this round oilcloth Monopoly set, the earliest known surviving copy of the game, Darrow gave it to his brother-in-law. He, in turn, passed it along to his mother-in-law, and she gave it to her cousin. It remained in the family for 60 years. In 1992, the family offered the game for auction through Sotheby's. That was exciting news to the Forbes family, which had converted patriarch Malcolm Forbes' famous antique toy collection into a museum. The Forbes magazine gallery bought the round set. For a magazine which calls itself the capitalist tool, what toy or game is more appropriate for, for a gallery with toy soldiers and toy boats than to have the earliest surviving games of Monopoly. Monopoly has been published in more than 20 languages and has been customized for cities from London to Moscow. But whatever the properties are called, we all have our own strategy for success. The Red Series, Illinois, and that, and that set, people seem to land there a lot. I mean, obviously, everyone always liked Boardwalk and Park Place, but the number of times people could skip around those hotels and Boardwalk always seemed very unfair unless it was me. The original round Monopoly board, handmade by Charles Darrow, is on view to the public in the Forbes Magazine Gallery in New York City, as are earlier versions by Elizabeth Magee and Charles Todd. Next 